Welcome to John Gets Games, where today I'll be playing a full game of Anno 1800 with my friends Anastasia and Nick. Now, I first will be giving you an overview of how the rules for this game works, and for that I use a physical version of the game, and then we will use Tabletop Simulator to play through the game. I do want to mention that I have recorded a tutorial-style instructional video for Anno 1800, and you can find a link to that in the description of this video. Now, I do want to mention that the only reason we are making this video is because this game won the monthly poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of the channel. If you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and many of them come with perks, like watching exclusive content, including my uh, ongoing impressions of all the games that I'm playing, as well as being able to vote on videos like this one and see them early and advertisement-free. Now, I do want to mention that once we finished playing this game, the three of us recorded a podcast episode where we discuss this play as well as Anno 1800 in general. The three of us have played this game a lot, so we have quite a bit to say, and you can listen to that by searching for the Friendly Ties podcast wherever you normally listen to podcasts, and you can also find a link to it in the description of this video. The final thing I'd like to ask is that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel, and we love to see comments uh, when you watch these videos, if there's any turns where you think we should have done something differently, or maybe you just saw a uh, mistake that we made, then please comment down below because that kind of feedback is great and we really do appreciate it. All right, it's now time to jump into the overview for the game, and of course, if you'd like, you can just skip right past that and jump right into the play. Out here we have the game mostly set up for the start of a game, although I'm just showing one player's area here. Now before I move on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and it's certainly possible that we'll make mistakes as we're playing it, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. Now, I would also like to mention that the main purpose of this overview is to give you enough of an understanding of how the game works to actually understand the playthrough. This is not going to be a comprehensive rules teach. On that note, let's now start talking about the game. Each player is going to have a board just like this in front of them at the start, along with four of these green, three blue, and two of these red cubes, and these are effectively workers that you can use to generate resources in the game. So every player is going to have one of these in front of them, and on a player's turn, they're going to take one main action and as many free actions as they want to. Now there are quite a few main actions, and let's talk about the first one right now, which involves developing a new industry. As you can see, this main board is covered with a ton of different tiles that have been sorted to be placed into a matching spot. For most of these stacks, there are exactly two tiles, whereas there are more than two for these ships and these shipyards over here. Now what players are going to do is take tiles from this main area and put them on their player board, and those become industries that they will specialize in. So, for your full turn main action, you can take any one of these that you want, as long as you don't already have one of that tile in front of you. So, for example, let's say we took this one right here. This is a workshirt factory, but then before we can actually construct this, we have to pay the associated resources. In this case, we need thread as well as coal. Now, the way we make resources in this game is we allocate our workers to various spots on our board to then generate those specific resources. For example, on our main board, you can see there is a thread factory over here. And underneath it, we can see two of these green spots. Now, the color matches up with the cubes, and the number of spots is always two for every one of these factories. And in order to make this thread, we simply take one of our green cubes, which are farmers, from our main supply, and we put it onto an empty spot in that associated factory. As soon as we place this down, that has created thread, and then we can use that thread that exists to construct this over here. There is no token to denote that resource that we just made. Now we need thread as well as coal, so we can see coal down here has the red icons, which means we have to take a red cube, which is a craftsman, and place that down onto one of these empty spots. If both of these were full, for example, we would not be able to place another one down even if we had more cubes, because these do block those spots. Now in this case, we have one coal and one thread, which is everything that we need to create this factory, so we can then flip this over and then place this down onto our board. When we place this down, it cannot go into the water. That is where ships go, and I'll talk about ships soon. But you can put it here on the shoreline, or you can also cover up any one of these pre-printed spots or a spot that has a previously placed tile. If, for example, this was already over here, we could place this on top of it, and then this previously placed tile will go back to the main supply where somebody could build it again later on in the game. So, for example, we could put this over here, and now, for as long as we have this, we can spend our blue cubes, which are workers, in order to create work shirts. Now, that's important because another main action that you can do on your turn is play cards. And at the start of the game, every player is going to have nine cards in their hand. Now, at the top of these cards, we can see various icons, which look a lot like the icons that we saw on this factory tile that we already built. And again, for your main action, and you only get one main action a turn, you can play one of these cards from your hand as long as you can afford the resources. 
As you can see, three of our cards show work shirts, which is why in this example, it made sense to create that work shirt factory. So for example, let's say we want to construct this card right here. Now that requires work shirts as well as bread. And for this example, let's pretend one of our opponents had already constructed a bread factory on their board. Now, in order to play this, we need the work shirts and the bread. We can make the work shirts easily by taking one of our blue workers and placing it down onto our work shirt factory, but we do not have a bread factory. However, our opponent over here does. Now that's great because we can actually trade with them. In fact, they can't say no to us trading for the bread that they have in front of them. The way we do this trade is we are going to spend trade tokens and the number of trade tokens we have to spend is going to be dictated by the type of factory that we are trading for. Now by type, I mean color. As you can see, there are green factories, red ones, as well as blue ones, and this bread over here is blue. Now with that in mind, we can focus right over here, because as you can see in the blue worker area, it shows a single trade token. Now what that means is in order to trade for an opponent's blue type factory, we have to spend one of our trade tokens. And in fact, if we want to trade for one of our opponent's green type factories, that will also take one trade token. However, if we want to trade with a red type factory that somebody else has, that would cost two. And if we want to trade with a purple type, that would cost three. Now, as you go from the green all the way up to purple, the relative complexity of the factories is going to increase, which is why the number of trade tokens that we need is going to increase as well. So let's focus back out to finish this example where we can spend one trade token in order to trade for this blue factory because again, that only takes the one trade token. Now, whenever you trade with an opponent, they will immediately gain one gold from the supply. Now, this does not matter what type of factory you just traded for. They always get one and it comes from the supply, not from you. So that means we traded with them to get that bread and then they get one gold for it. Again, they can't say no to this trade, but of course they're getting gold for the trade, so they're not too unhappy about it. Now, we did spend this trade token over here and we don't put it back into the supply we simply put it off to the side because we will gain access to that later on in the game now at the beginning of this overview i did say that on your turn you take one main action and as many free actions as you want and trading is technically a free action so for this example the main action is playing a card face up in front of us and then one free action involved trading for the bread in order to actually place this down right here the last thing I'd like to say about trading is you are never allowed to trade for more than one of a specific good at any point on your turn. That means you could only trade for one bread total, even if you need more than one, and even if multiple opponents have bread factories, you can only ever trade for one. So if you ever need more than one of a resource within your turn, you better be the one to actually have that factory in your area. At this point, it's time to talk about another free action, and that involves actually activating the card that we have played in front of us. I did say that for your main action, you can play a card, but you don't actually gain the benefits on the bottom of the card until you take a free action to activate it. That means we could place this right over here, and then on a future turn, place that, and we could put this over here, leaving all of them as they are. But then as a free action, we can flip as many of these over as we want to, to immediately gain the benefits on the bottom of that card. Now let's start with this one right here. It's quite simple. When you flip this over, you get four gold, so you can take that from the supply and put it in front of you, and then put this into a face-down pile. It's worth noting that all of these cards are worth points at the end of the game. These are worth three. These ones right here are worth eight, and you can actually see that printed on the back of the cards, and these over here, which I'll talk about soon, are worth five points. And you get those points whether or not you've actually flipped the card over. So this one just gives you four gold, which is great. This one right over here immediately gets you three trade tokens, but these are special because they are actually one-time use. You put those tokens on top of the card, and once you've used all of them, you can flip the card over, and it is now gone, and all of these trade tokens that you used will also be returned to the supply as you use them. Again, remember the trade tokens you have on your board will be used later on, and I'll talk about how you gain access to this soon. Now the next type of card is this one, and as you can see the benefit there shows two of the green farmer cubes. When you use this, you will immediately take the indicated cubes from the supply and put them on top of your board and then it will be time to draw a card. Thematically, in this game, every one of these cubes is part of your population, and you are trying to meet their needs, and every time you gain a new cube, you have to draw a card of the matching color. You can see these three-point cards are associated with the farmers and the workers, and these eight-point cards are associated with the craftsmen, the engineers, as well as the entrepreneurs. So, by taking these two green cubes, we have to draw two of these cards, and thematically speaking, these are the two people which are represented by these two cubes, although the moment you take these cards, you no longer have to worry about them being associated. So these cards would be added into our hand, and when we play these cards, that is us thematically satisfying the needs of that new population that has been added into our area. 
While we are over here, I'd like to talk about the next main action, and that involves actually increasing your population. For your one main action on your turn, you can gain up to three cubes, and you will have to spend the associated resources that are printed above these areas. So in order to gain a new farmer, you simply need some wooden planks, and you can gain wooden planks by using a farmer down over here to gain that resource. These workers take wooden planks as well as bricks. The craftsmen take bricks, coal, as well as these cargo boxes, and the relative number and complexity of these resources that you need to get more cubes is only going to go up. And again, as you gain these new cubes, you have to draw new cards into your hand. The next main action I'd like to talk about is upgrading cubes. You may have noticed these icons between the different areas, and for your full turn main action, you can upgrade up to three of your cubes. In order to do this, you have to spend all of the associated resources between where the cube is and where you want it to go. So if you want to turn this farmer into a worker, you simply need bricks, and it looks like we can gain bricks right down here with a red. So we could place this red right over here to turn this green into a blue, and we simply swap it out with the supply. Now, when we did this, we did not increase our population. We simply trained that one cube. So that means we don't draw a new card when we do upgrades. As you can see, going from blue to red is going to take coal and cargo. And going from red to purple is going to take a window and iron. And windows are not a resource that we start with here on our boards. In fact, if we look out here, windows take wood as well as glass to be made, and glass is also not on our boards, that's right over here. So in order to make a window to upgrade into those purple engineers, somebody needs to make glass, and then somebody needs to use that glass in order to build windows, which can then be used to upgrade into those purple workers. All right, let's now talk about the next main action, and that involves using Explore Tokens. At the start of the game, each player has one of these, and there are actually three different main actions that use these tokens. The first of these I'll talk about is Expanding in the Old World, and this is the Old World right here, so you can use this to expand your area. When we focus on the main board, these are the old world tiles, and these are new world tiles, which I'll talk about in just a second. Now, looking down over here, you can see the old world tile is going to cost one, two, three, or four exploration tokens, and the number that it costs is dictated by the number of these tiles that you already have. If you are taking your first old world tile, it's going to cost one explorer, and if you already have one of these and you want to take a second one, it's going to cost two. So, in this example, we could spend that one exploration token and put it to the side of our board, and then we take randomly the top one of these tiles, flip it over, and then add it into our area. As you can see, by placing this down, we have increased our land area by four and our water area by two, where we can put ships, which again, I will talk about soon. And every one of these old worlds has a random benefit that you get. This one right here comes with a brick factory that takes blue workers to make bricks. Remember, at the start of the game, we can all make bricks, but it takes those red craftsmen. And in general, those are harder to come by. Now, if we look here at this deck, there's a wide variety of benefits. If this is the one that you explore into, you actually gain a couple of blue workers, and then, of course, you draw two cards. And then other tiles might have benefits like this one, which actually gives you a ship. Whenever you gain ships, you get tokens that are indicated on the bottom. For example, this one shows an exploration icon. So if we place this right here, we would gain an explorer token, which we could then use in the future. So, as you can see, expanding in the old world is going to always give you four land and two water spots, but the benefit that you get is random, so it often makes sense to do this early so that you can plan accordingly based off of your other actions. Now, another thing that you can use these exploration tokens for is to explore the new world. Now, the cost for this is the same as the old world. As you can see, it's one explore token for your first new world. It's going to be two for your second and three for your third and so on. Now, these also have some randomness on the backside, but another part about exploring the new world is you always draw exactly three new world cards. Those are right over here. So by taking this, this is our first. So we'd have to spend one of our explore tokens and then we would draw three of these. And these are thematically, again, population that's been added into our overall area. And these are the needs of that population that we are looking to satisfy by spending the the associated resources up along the top. Then we take this, we flip it over, and we put it into our area. And as you can see, these icons are different. They all show a trade icon. And what this means is only the player who has this tile can spend one trade token to get the raw resource that is indicated. Every single one of these has cotton as the first option. As you can see, if we glance through all of these, there's always cotton there. But then the other two spots vary from four different options. So you're not sure what the other two will be. And that can be important because many of the cards that we try to play in the future will need factories that are made with raw resources from the new world. 
For example, this card was here in our hand, and in order to play it, we would need rum, and in order to actually create a rum factory, if we look over here, that's going to take wood as well as sugarcane, and the way we gain sugarcane is by having a new world tile that looks just like this. Now, if you don't actually draw a new world tile that has the sugarcane on it, then you cannot build that factory, and you are not allowed to trade for other players' new world raw resources. So if you're not drawing into the raw resource that you need, then perhaps you'll have to change your plans. All right, the time has come to talk about building ships. Now, the way this works is you're going to build up to one ship for every one of the shipyards you have in front of you. We all start with a level one shipyard, and each shipyard can make a ship of up to the value of that shipyard. That means if we were to take another level one shipyard, as you can see, it actually doesn't cost anything except your full turn. Now you can build up to two of these level one ships. And if you got a level two shipyard, which requires using engineers to actually make, then this will let you actually make ships that are up to level two. Now we can tell the level of ships by glancing over here on the board because in the bottom right corner it tells you how many of the specific token you get for getting that ship. As you can see, these are level 1s because they have one trade token or one of these explore tokens. These are 2 and these are 3 and again, in order to build them, you have to have a shipyard of at least that value. Now, when you build ships, you can build as many as you want to up to the amount of shipyards that you have. So investing in shipyards can mean you can have very effective and efficient shipbuilding actions later on in the game. As you can see, these ships often require sails, but some of the later ones actually require steam engines. And when you take these ships and you place them in front of you, you then immediately gain the indicated tokens. So for example, if we took this one and that one, we would of course first have to pay all these resources. So that would be a sail and a wood plank for this one. And this one needs a sail, wood plank, cannons, as well as an engineer. Now that means you actually have the engineer on your board and you simply put them off to the side and you will gain access to them soon. And then you can flip these over. And just like that, we would have gained one trade token and two explore tokens. We'd put those directly on top of the ships. And then we have these for as long as we have the ships. And of course we can spend these to explore the new and old worlds as we've seen. And we can use these trade tokens to get resources that our opponents have in front of them. Now, at this point, I'm sure you're wondering, how do you get access to these things that you've put off to the side? For example, let's say we had a situation like this, and we just didn't have that many options left to do on our turn because we've used so much stuff. Now, another full turn main action is called a city festival, and it's also called Stadtfest in the German version, and you'll hear us using both of those terms as we're playing. Now, the way this works is you simply take all of your cubes from wherever they are, and you put them back up to the top so that you can use them again in the future. And then all of your exploration tiles, as well as all of your trade tiles, will go back onto their associated ships so that you can use them again in the future as well. Now, again, that takes your entire turn, but once you've done that, you will have a ton of opportunities to use this stuff to do more things on future turns. At this point, there are two more main actions I'd like to tell you about, and they're both pretty simple. The first involves just discarding cards. Let's say you have some cards in your hand and you just are not able to actually play them. Well, you can take up to three cards from your hand and put them to the bottom of the associated decks, and then you draw the same number of cards from those specific decks, but this does cost your whole turn. Hopefully, the cards that you draw into, you'll be able to better play around. Oftentimes, players go the entire game without doing this, but it is an option available to them. The other main action I'd like to point out is this one over here. That lets you spend two of your Explore tokens to draw three of these Expedition cards. Now, every one of these has a similar style. They all show an animal on the left, as well as an artifact on the right, and they all have the colors red, purple, or teal on them. And these are used during final scoring, and I'll talk about that very soon. Let's now focus back on our board because there's one more free action that's very important for you to understand. Now again, you can perform as many free actions as you want during your turn, and this one involves paying gold in order to reset your cubes. I'm sure you noticed earlier that there are gold costs underneath these spots, and this is the number of gold that we have to pay to reset an individual cube. For example, if this was over here and on our turn we really wanted to play something that required a red worker, we could do that by paying gold to gain access to another one of these red workers. Now again, you could spend your whole turn resetting all of your cubes, but this is a free action that you can do before you do other things on your turn. As you can see, the red workers have a three gold cost, so you could spend three gold and then take a red worker from wherever they are and place them up here where you could then immediately use them. 
Now, this is also helpful if you perhaps need to free up a spot. Let's say we really needed coal and we didn't have the trade tokens to trade it from somebody else, and we'd already plugged up both of the spots on our coal factory. Well, we can now spend three of our gold in order to refresh one of these red cubes to then free up a spot to then use with any of our red cubes in order to gain the coal that we need, effectively spending three gold for the coal that we need in that moment. You can also do this for cubes that are off to the side. As you can see, this purple costs four gold, but by doing that, you could then bring this back here and then use it immediately on that same turn. At this point, I'd like to briefly talk about a couple more icons that can show up on the cards that we have in front of us. One of them looks like this. Now this has an exclamation point, which means when you play it, you have to immediately use it, and that lets you take two other cards from your hand and discard them to the bottom of the specific stacks so you don't have them in your hand anymore. And there is a very good reason to do that, which I'll talk about soon. This one right here is quite simple. You can use this card to gain another main turn action. Remember, you only get one main turn action per turn, but if you play this and then use it, you gain another one that you can then use in the future. Looking through here, these let you draw more expedition cards, and then these let you actually do upgrades. Remember, you can spend your turn doing upgrades, but this one lets you upgrade up to three times without spending any resources, but all of the upgrades have to start at green or blue. All right, we can now talk about how the game ends, and this is quite simple. As soon as any one player has no cards left in their hand at all, that will trigger the end of the game. That player will take this fireworks token, and it's worth seven points to them at the end of the game. Then we keep playing until everyone has taken the same number of turns. Then we play another round around the table, and after that, it will be time for final scoring. The way we get points is we will first count up all of the cards that we've played throughout the game, whether or not we've actually flipped them over. Again, these are all worth three, these are all worth eight, and those are all worth five. We can add to that the points that we get from gold, because every three gold that we have at the end of the game becomes one victory point. And then, of course, the player with the fireworks token gets those seven points. Next up, we can score points for the expedition cards that we've gathered throughout the game. Now, these actually let us get points for the cubes that we have in front of us. Once the game is over, we can consolidate all of our cubes up here. And then you can see this card right here has a purple and a red icon on it. So you could put a purple cube there and a red cube there. And the purple cubes will always be worth two points. And the red ones will always be worth one. If we look over here, some of them are teal, which are the very hard to make entrepreneurs. And if you are able to have a teal at the end of the game, you could place that on one of these teal spots spots, and those will always be worth three points. That means if you have a bunch of reds, purples, and teals, it makes a lot of sense to spend your time, especially near the end of the game, drawing into these expedition cards to then hope to get as many points as you can out of the workforce that you've already invested in throughout the game. Now there's one final place that we get points, and those are these mission cards. At the start of every game, we are going to randomly flip over five of these face up on the table, and these are going to drastically dictate the flow of the game. Some of these have a yellow background, and these are actually free actions that you can do on your turn. For example, this one right here lets you spend two exploration tokens to gain a trade token, and this one over here lets you spend two of those exploration tokens to discard a card from your hand, which of course will make it easier to empty your hand entirely and trigger the end of the game. There aren't that many of those yellow background cards, but there are a couple. This one right here lets you spend a teal worker, exhausting it to the side to gain five gold. Now, the rest of these cards are actually end game scoring cards. As you can see, they have various conditions on them. This one right here will penalize you two points for every card you have in your hand once the game is over. Remember, normally you are not penalized for that, but if at the start of the game you deal this out, then you're probably not going to want to have as big a hand as in other plays. Other cards have you competing with your opponents. This one right here says the player with the most teal entrepreneurs at the end of the game will get 10 points, and the person with the second most will get 4. Yet other cards don't have you directly competing with your opponents. They simply give you goals for industries. This one right here gives you 3 points for every one of these 7 different industries that you can develop into as the game goes on. Now, as you can see, there are a bunch of these cards that give different scoring conditions, and depending on which ones come out in the game, you will definitely vary your playstyle in order to best get the points from them. Once again, you always deal out five of these, and it's possible that all five will be end game scoring condition cards, and you won't have any of these free actions, or it's possible you could have almost all of them be these free actions, and you'll have very few end game conditional scoring cards to play towards as the game is going on. Once everyone adds up all their points, the player with the most victory points will be the winner. Now, at this point, I think I'm done with the overview. I've certainly not talked about everything in this game, but you should have a good understanding of the backbone for how this game plays, and you'll see how all of this stuff works as we are actually playing. And on that note, I think it's now time to jump into the game. All right, we're all here, and by all I mean myself, my friends Anastasia and Nick. Um, I did a randomizer, and it looks like I'm going to be the starting player for this game. Uh, now, before we actually jump into all this, let's just briefly introduce ourselves. Um, obviously, I'm Jonathan, and when it comes to the cards in our hands, 
I just want to say that I have a weird hand. I'm not going to be saying how, <laughs> because I don't want Nick and Anastasia to know, but I, I just have to say that this is a strange assortment of bonuses, uh, one that I haven't actually seen in the many, many games of this that I've played so far. Uh, so I'm going to be the first player, and then Anastasia, you'll be next. Yeah. I also have an interesting hand. I think it's... Uh... I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. It's gonna be it's gonna be an intriguing I don't know. I don't like I don't like to get too judgmental about my hands in Anno. I just kinda like to embrace the cards and just run with it. So I'm I'm gonna run with this. That's that's what's happening. Nice. No no presuppositions. Uh yeah, I'm going third and I will say that I think I have a very normal hand. Uh and there's one guy who's given me a particularly raised eyebrow, so we'll see if we can play him first. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Now, before we actually start the game, let's talk really quickly about the five mission cards. Uh, at the start of each game, we pull five of these randomly out. Some of them are end game cards, and some of them are mid game actions. This one right over here is a Barrel Umbara, and I should probably not try to pronounce all these names. Uh, but that says that on our turns, as many times as we want, we can spend two of our exploration tokens to get a uh, trade that we can then use immediately. And the other action is this one, and it says that we can uh, spend our teal workers in order to get five money. We can exhaust our teal workers. Then we have three that are for endgame scoring. Uh, looks like we have the queen, and she's going to give us six points if we have the champagne bottle uh, manufacturing, as well as six points if we have the artillery. Then we have... Uh, Carl Leonard von Malching. I said I wouldn't do the names, and now I am. Um, he is all about giving us points for making stuff from the New World. So that's the coffee, the chocolate, the cigars, and the rum. Uh, lastly, we have a bit of a university battle going on. At the end of the game, the player with the most purple cubes, um, which are, I guess, engineers, I believe, is going to get 10 points, and then the second most will get four. So we're going to keep all of these in mind as we are playing the game. You'll keep all of them in mind. I'll keep like one or two of them in mind. <laughs> That's not true. Do not listen to Nick. He's lying. He always <laughs> keeps them all in mind. And then he pretends like he doesn't. And then he sweeps the floor with you. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. I'm going to take the first turn. And I think for reasons, I'm going to start off by building a beer factory. For reasons. Yes. So I can take that. And I'm going to place it right over here. That is going to take a wheat and a coal, so I can make the wheat with a farmer and a coal with a craftsman. Okay, I make beer. That's me done. All right. I think we're going to go with something I like to do in this game. Can Do we have any guesses? Well, well, the, well, if it isn't the patented coal Anastasia The start. cheap coal. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You never do this. I almost forgot about it. I was like going to go buy something else. Oh, lame. Uh, no, I never do this. I am going to make some cheap coal. Cost me one wood. Yep. That's that. Great. I'm going to do my best little John impression and get some schnapps, 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 schnapps. Uh, <laughs> Is that what I sound like? You know. <laughs> no, 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 little John, not you. Oh. <laughs> the famous rapper. You're not going to use Anastasia's uh, cheap coal to trade. No, uh, I think I got other stuff to buy. Um, no, I uh, just just to make a point too. I'm not going to. All right, just to make a point. Okay. Sounds I mean, maybe that, maybe later. Who knows? He I says that now. Just wait a couple turns. <laughs> I'm sure later. <laughs> we'll see. Not now. Anyway, I'm done. To be clear, everyone, it is cheap because it, it only costs a blue worker to trade for, which is slightly cheaper than if you either use your own red or if you were to trade for it otherwise. That's why we call it cheap coal. Yes, 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 yes. All right, it's my turn again. And normally the first thing I do is go to the old world, but I decided to get beer first. So now I'm going to mix things up and go to the old world for my second action. <laughs> so this is my first old world expansion. So it's gonna take one of these explorations and I'm just going to shuffle these up real quick and take the top one. And, ooh, okay, that's nice. That is going to give me two exploration cards right from the start. Honestly, there's a lot of things I would rather have had, but there's some things in there I also would have been pretty not happy with. So I can keep I don't these. think I've ever seen yeah, that I one. Yeah, I legitimately don't remember that being in the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so right from wild. the get-go, I have some uh, goals right here as far as 
some of these cubes I want to take. So yeah, that is me done. You know, I don't know why, but I never want to old world early, like ever. I know it'd be good and it would probably give me, I might get cheap coal again. That would be funny. That'd be great now, but <laughs> I never, I never want to do it early. Despite that, I am going to make something. What's been made so far? Beer and schnapps? Yeah. Very alcoholic so far. Yeah. Seriously. All right. I'm going to make some soap. I use my cheap coal. And these pigs. I uh, will make some soap. Soap. Nice. All right, I'll go to the old world. <laughs> God. And okay, there we go. Piles of blue workers. Couple of blue cubes, as well as two more blue slash green cards. Okay. Next up, I think I'm going to make a work shirt factory. Got. At least a couple of those that I need. I can grab that right here. And then that is going to take some thread as well as coal. So the thread I can handle over there. And now, do I want to spend one of my trade tokens to Anastasia for a cheap coal? Or should I just toss this red person over there? Mm, you do. Do you I? want to spend it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even need the gold, but I just think anyone trading with me is a good idea. <laughs> Up to you. You know, I think for reasons, I am going to trade with you, Anastasia. All right. So that's going to take one trade token because this is uh, a blue type of work. And I'm trading for your blue factory right over there. And you get a gold and I magically get your coal. And then, boom, I make work shirts. All right. It's nothing magical about the world of industry, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am going to make some more things. I will make some canned meat. So another green worker on these pigs. Okay. And a red worker down here on this steel. Um, okay. I guess I'm going to build some bread. All right. With a wheat... And uh, <laughs> coal that I pay for out of my own stock. <laughs> Refusing <laughs> to go for oh the cheap Oh my gosh, your Anastasia principles coal. here. All right, I'm going to play the first card of the game, and that's going to be this guy. So that is going to take some boxes as well as beer. And this is why I spent the trade token for the coal, because I wanted to have this red craftsman available to go over here to get me the boxes I need. And then I can use my own beer. And then that is going to get me a red. I can put that right over here. And then I do have to draw one of these cards because these are for the red, purple, and teal cubes that we get. I use this person so I can flip them over. And they are just worth three points to me at the end of the game. All right. I am going to use your work shirts, John. Ooh, nice. And I will also use the soap. And I will also play a card down. This card, which is going to give me two, two more green workers. And two more cards. Cool. So I'll gain a gold for you using my work shirts. Nice. Okie dokie. Um, I'm also going to play someone because I am feeling jealous. And... As a man of my word, I shall play this eyebrow-raising fellow. Wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First card played. <laughs> uh, so I'll get two workers, and I'll draw wow. two cards for Between that. your old world tile and that card, you have a lot of workers. <laughs> yes, one could even argue too many workers <laughs> well, and such a full <laughs> hand. But workers that would be a, can be a frivolous friend. argument. <laughs> I'm done. All right. I am going to go again, and I'm going to play another card. And tell me if you've seen this before. This card gets me a red worker. So I need work shirts and the cargo boxes, which I can use this craftsman that I got last turn for the cargo boxes. And then I will get a work shirt. And then I will get another red worker and another red card. One of you made spread, right? <laughs> That's me. 
Oh, goody. You may have some money, Nick. One dollar. All right. So I'm going to play this. And I'm going to use my other soap. And I will take these three greens, return them home, and bring out three blues. Nice. Just to reiterate for everybody, the way this upgrade works is you start at green or blue. So greens can turn into blues, blues can turn into reds. So that was a really nice way to increase your workforce. All you, Nick. All me. Um, I believe that I'm going to pay each of you one, one of you for your canned goods. That's to Anastasia and one for beer. That's John. Nice. I'll play this fine cigar smoking fellow Yep. to get a red uh, craftsman and card. Nice. Thank you for your business. Does anybody make sausages yet? yet? No, but I would be very happy if you decided to make some. You would Feel be, free huh? to make some. Okay, well, let me think <laughs> about it. Let's see. Sausages would take a coal and some pigs. Hmm. You could even make them and trade me for your coal. Yeah. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Actually, I'm out of trade tokens, so what am I saying? <laughs> Go ahead, make sausages. I'll probably copy you. I don't think I'm making sausage right now. Sorry, Anastasia. Uh, instead, I am going to use Nick's schnapps. So that's blue. So that's going to be one trade token. So Nick, you get a coin. All right. And then I need to use my work shirts again. So that is going to get me four gold bars that I will take immediately. All right. Well, I will make sausages instead. Okay. <laughs> which I was planning to do anyways. Um, okay. So in order to do this, I need to first play a pig, but I do not have any pigs. So I'm going to pay one gold to uh, basically uh, return one of my greens home and then reuse it over here on my pig. Except you have to uh, return a, re- a pig one, yeah. Except, <laughs> except for re- except for doing that, I'm going to return a pig one, and then put it back, and that costs me a gold. And uh, then I will also use one of my coal on my cheap coal down here, and I will flip that over. All right, this steel. This fine fire water will make this guy who's missing an eye, unfortunately. Yeah. You going to use him I for the trade tokens yet? not activate him, no. I mean, he's going to stick around. Okay, cool. Because uh, there's a party coming. Yes. Yeah. Cause <laughs> just to reiterate for everybody, once you use this, you get the three tokens, and they go away once you use them. But if you do a festival and you haven't used them yet, you lose them. So you definitely want to use this, get these when you think you're going to use them. Okay, I'm in a weird situation. I'm just going to vocalize something. I don't think I've ever got this far into a game and had no opportunities to get green or blue cubes from the cards in my <laughs> hand. It's very strange. Normally, I feel like at this point, I've got like a bunch of blues over here that I can use. But right now, I just have these three. And I do have some money, so I might pay to reuse them. I could also, I guess, just make blues which is something i think i've literally never done in the probably 10 games of this i've played that would cost a plank and some bricks um i could do that bricks are red and planks are green oh man that'd be that feel weird though i gotta tell you sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do i will say there's the flip side of this where i have played it where i've had nothing but a hand of just three or four or five make worker cards and you feel like this is just endless <laughs> endlessly yeah. making workers so it really can be kind of interesting the, the wide variety that's the luck of the draw right there this is a very weird hand i mean it's cool it's cool to have a weird hand but i'm just like all my normal like dance moves are just not available to me right now <laughs> why don't you just become like the trade ship king uh, that's the thing i need to draw green slash blues to hopefully grab a purple card but i have mm. not drawn any of those yet it's it's a strange situation to be in i really wish i'd pulled nick's old world card to get those two blues that would have been amazing i'm seriously considering just doing a festival right now i'm just trying to see if there's a better way i can use my turn right now with my one red and two green i mean honestly 
you can basically buy two greens with these two greens or buy blue like and you could spend a money like you can wood is actually pretty good commodity for that like yeah i have to admit that is tempting you know i think i am going to purchase cubes uh i've never done it this early and i now see why sometimes you need to do that uh, a big reason for that is because the cards i'm about to draw could give me other opportunities to draw more of those uh, green and blue cards. Sometimes it feels like they can really clog up your hand, but honestly, at this point, I feel like my hand is starting to get clogged up with the really hard ones that I'm nowhere near being able to do. So, yeah, I'm going to make up to three cubes. Uh, I could start... I think I will make a blue. So that needs wood and brick. I can get the brick right here, and then the wood, I can go there. And I actually can make these one at a time, so I can now take this and then potentially use it to make the next one. So I'll take this blue, and then I'll draw this card, and I can make up to two more. Ah, okay. That's a, a card that I'm pretty happy to see. All right. Now I think I'm going to use this green farmer, and they are going to make me a wood. That will let me get a green. And sort of importantly, I can draw another card. Oh, okay. That's cool. And then I could do this one more time. And I think I want to, but my wood's maxed out. So I'm going to spend one of my gold so that I can reset this green and then immediately use it again to get another plank. So that's going to give me another green. So now I've got, honestly, maybe too many workers, but I really feel like my hand, the cards were just not working for me. I needed more. Ooh, I mean, that, that card's not very interesting at all. All right, <laughs> that's my turn. <laughs> Not at all. Not in the slightest. All right. I'm going to play this card after John just complained <laughs> about not having any of these cards. Um, okay. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my canned meat and my sausage. And I will take two of these workers. Take another one. Cool. All right. Um, I am going to have a festival. Yay. <laughs> so fancy using the tabletop simulator mod. Back to you, John. Awesome. Okay, well, I have a relatively similar amount of cubes to the last time, but I do have this worker, so that does that change anything for me? I also have all these extra cards that I do need to consider. Yeah, I'm going to play a card. I'm going to play this nice person over here. So that's going to take beer and work shirts. I will go here for the beer, and then I'm out of blue, but I can spend two gold to reset a blue. So I'll take this off work shirts and then put it back onto work shirts to pay for this and get four gold. Is that one of the ones you just drew? No, my starting hand um, was a whole multiple, many cards giving me reds and many cards giving me golds. And like I said, zero <laughs> cards giving me greens or blues, which was peculiar. I may still have cards from my starting hand that give me more reds. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am going to go explore the old world. All and right. I swear that if I get cheap coal, it will be karma. Oh, nope. <laughs> nope. Ugh, more it's farmers. not quite what I wanted. Although, weirdly, that actually kind of works well with my hand. So Nice. We will take it. You can already see how in this game it's endless cards. Yes, endless the hands cards. balloon up before they go down because the only way the game ends is somebody playing all their cards. And the early stage of this game really does always feel like, how's this game ever going to end? But it always does. And for us, usually <laughs> relatively quickly now that we've played it so much. Um, great. Uh, Anastasia, that's some very, very fine canned meat that you have over there. Oh, I'd be happy to send you some if you'd like it. Great, yeah. I'm gonna just mix it with this schnapps and make like a like a canned meat schnapps slurry <laughs> um, for Ooh. this this guy who hey. definitely definitely drinks that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, First purple of the game. And very nice. Get my purple. Roll. Very nice. That's me. All right. I've just got a couple green left. I think it's time for me to festival. Um, I need I need all this stuff back. So there we go. I'm good. All right. I am not going to festival. I am going to keep playing. Uh, I'm going to play this with a sausage and some boxes. And that's going to let me upgrade three. Yeah. 
And I'm going to do these two farmers. Farmers you just got. They're already upgraded. That's nice. And this one blue. So one, two, three. Very nice. All right. I think that I am going to build... Nope, I'm not going to build anything. I am going exploring in the new world. And look at this. We find seeds and wool and rubber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, cocoa seeds, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's chocolate. And then, and then three, uh, three randos. Three new of the new world cards, which are worth five points each. Your hand is huge. That's, that's me. Okay, I can go, and I think I also want to go to the New World for reasons. So that's going to take one exploration token, because this is my first New World. So I will need to draw three of these cards. And then the New World tile I get is going to make wool, rubber, and sugarcane. Um, they always have wool on them. That's always there. The other two are going to be random. So uh, these are the new cards that I have in my hand. And wow, I have a lot of cards, a lot of interesting opportunities here. And that's me done. All right. I can't stop, won't stop over here. So I'm just going to keep playing cards. So yeah, you haven't festivaled yet. I have not canned meat and boxes to play this nice lady for iron, actually, not boxes. For money. Iron, not boxes. I don't know why I can't read symbols in this game today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like very obvious. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, Anastasia, I would like to purchase from you some sausage to, again, mix up with some schnapps. We'll pour them together, make a nice little slurry. I don't really like what's coming out of your industry <laughs> over there. I don't <laughs> know that I ever want to visit. Your people consume some strange and things. and broke, so, yeah, you know. <laughs> we, we make do with what we have. Don't judge us. And I'll draw a card. I'm good to go. Okay, I think I'm going to use my new world to make some refined cotton. I'm gonna take this right over here. That is going to need some raw cotton and I can get that by spending a trade token. And then I also need some wood planks and I can very easily do that. Okay. All right, I think the time has come. Now, I don't know what Nick and John have been doing this whole time. I understand that the English version of this is festival, but, uh, I own the German version and I've played a lot of the German version here on TTS. So I will be Stradvesting, <laughs> which I'm saying incorrectly, but I do not know any other way to play this game. So <laughs> I'm Stradvesting. I'm not festivaling like the rest of you. <laughs> Stradvest. Stradvest. Great. We're getting sailory over here yeah. with a shipyard. We need some bricks for the shipyard. We need some wood for the shipyard. This guy is just telling everyone what to do. It's great. Great time. Awesome. That's me. All right. It is my turn. And as much as I'd like to just trade for bread, I don't have much in the way of trade tokens right now. So I think I'm going to spend my turn making a bread factory. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to need some... Plants, wheat, barley, something like that, and then a coal, and that is me done. Well, I'm afraid I didn't think that far about what I was going to do. You have a um, lot of opportunities over here. <laughs> Nine workers. You know what? People like living in my society. That's we true. do not mix canned meat and schnapps together and call them a delicacy. Having said that, I think I need to use some of y'all schnapps and beer know what i want to do i want to make some glass oh that is a very early glass in my experience interesting i'm just trying to decide if i really want to use my cheap coal this early <laughs> <laughs> yes i think i will all right we're getting a proper fleet yeah we're gonna have both our shipyards producing that's going to require some sails. We've got guys who can make sails. That's going to require some boxes. We've got box makers. That's going to require some wood. Uh, we got one wood, and then unfortunately we have to pay a dollar to bounce this person. It's a little inefficient, but hey. Life goes on when you're shipping. I'll pick up three trade tokens. That is awesome. The industrialization is happening 
over here. But this is just exploration right now. <laughs> you're right. You're don't, right. Don't get out of. No, let's, not, let's not get excited. You know. You're not. You're not trying to ship schnapps and canned meat off to the world. No, no, that's for us. <laughs> okay, I have not played a card in a while, and I think I should change that. So let's play this card, which I can now do because, well, I've had the beer forever, but I now make bread. And I could have spent that trade token, but it would have been my, been my last trade token. And now I can use this lady to get three at some point. And I'll figure out when that is later, I think. All right, y'all. I'm going to be fair, and you each get a trade token. So Aww. Nick... You can have the bread, and John, you can have the beer, and I will make a purple worker, and I will take one of these cards. That will be that. John, take a dollar so I can play We Are Farmers. Nice. Go ahead. That brings me up to eight money, which is quite a bit. Somebody makes canned meat, right? I do. Anastasia. Well, awesome. It's your lucky day because I need some. So I'm going to play this card. So I also get a purple out. So I'm going to spend my trade token for Anastasia's canned meat. And then I do need some refined cotton. And that's why I spent all that effort to get this down. Maybe that was a little bit of a folly when I could have been doing some other stuff. But either way, I do have several of these reds. So I can do that. Then I can gain a purple worker, an engineer. I can get yet another one of these cards. I have... So many of these in my hand, and that will finish my turn. All right, y'all. It's time for a parte over here. I am going to make some champagne ah. to keep all of my massive workforce very happy. So boxes, glass, and this per exhaust, this engineer, is very hard figuring out how to make champagne. Nice. That and that's that. six extra points to you at the end of the game, right? Maybe. <laughs> yep, if you're paying attention to those end game cards, it sure <laughs> is. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very nice. Um, Anastasia, I would like to make you say yay by uh, buying some of your cheap coal. Yay! Hey, it happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> what did then, I tell you? A couple and turns. And I would like to make you say, wait, why are you doing that by buying some soap? Wait, why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, that's your turn, John. We, we have played too many games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I have a purple. And the thing I would like to have done by now is the thing that Nick did, getting a couple more trade ships. But I'm very far behind on that. Uh, I do have a purple, though. So I could spend that purple as well as a brick and some planks in order to get this level two shipyard and work towards that. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's go for it. That is going to take my purple, the planks, and the bricks. Awesome. And now I have two shipyards. All right. I'm going to explore the new world. That is... Sugarcane and totally coffee beans. not what I wanted. Yeah. If you like, I can uh, I can sell you Louisiana. You can sell me Florida, and we can both be better <laughs> off. I would rather your tile. I, I'm not going to lie. I am communicating the same thing back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're good, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, John, I would like to buy some beer from you. Excellent. And then we're going to go ahead and drop a bar of soap in that beer. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> For this miner who uh, needs really needs that pick me up. I'm pretty sure he's he's consuming the soap and the beer separately. <laughs> uh, first of all, don't pass judgment on my people. You mind your own civilization over there, and it's your turn. Awesome. All right, I'll take that gold. Okay, Anastasia, am I correct in that you make sausage? I do make sausage. Excellent. I okay. can even tell you how it gets made. <laughs> so I'm going to use this card over here to get three temporary trade tokens and then i'm going to spend one of them permanently so it's gone so i have just two of them now and i will get that sausage and then i will play this card along with my beer i had four cards in my starting hand that needed beer <laughs> so that's why it was the first tile that i took uh, and that is yet another card that gets me a red worker um, this is the third one of those that i had in my starting hand so i will take 
my third red worker of the game the old-fashioned way. Normally, I make these type of stuff and I upgrade them into reds, but this game I'm just making them right from the cards. And then I get yet another one of these super expensive cards. Y'all are making me rich. So rich, in <laughs> fact, that wow, I'm yeah. going to do what I think John has somehow dubbed the Nick plan, but I think it's just the buy a shipyard <laughs> plan. <laughs> um, it's a pretty pretty standard opening. <laughs> the truth is I have so many workers that it's not worth waiting around uh, uh, to, to for my next Stadfest, so I'm going to spend four money to bring this purple back and use it. Then I will use my bricks and some wood and build this level two shipyard. And that'll be that. Man, you were rich. Dang. Yeah. Uh, Feel free to keep trading with me. <laughs> wow. That sounded like I'm a threat. Not to. I, yeah. That, that was, <laughs> it's mostly John's fault, actually. <laughs> I've been doing a pretty good of not John. <laughs> Never mind. Stop fast. Whatever. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it's John's turn. Get out of here. <laughs> that wasn't a threat. That was an invitation. That was just saying that my world is clearly thriving with all of my workers on all of my industries, and you're just welcome to trade with me and make me rich. <laughs> All right, it is my turn, and now I'm going to do the thing that I did not do last turn. I think I'm going to make ships. Uh, it seemed too expensive last turn, but I have another red, which makes it three money less expensive, so I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do exactly what Nick did. I'm going to take a level two or level one trade ship as well as a level two trade ship. This is going to cost a pretty penny, though. So this one needs a sail, and that's good. And then it needs some wood planks. And it's already full, so that means I have to spend a money to put this back and then go there. This one is done. And then after that, I can gain a trade token there. And then I was planning on paying to get one of these reds back for the, uh, the cargo here. But I'm going to start here, I guess, by going on to the sales. And then instead of paying for it with the cargo, I just I have all these trade tokens. So I think I'm going to trade for Nick's cargo, considering Anastasia's bragging about being rich. So oh, car- my God. <laughs> car- oh, my God. Look, you got you to take, I've learned, you got to take the ego when you have it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so cargo boxes are so red, rare, which means that's going to cost two trade tokens. John, have you learned nothing? You know, Nick has more money than I do. Why would you want to help him? Because <laughs> I haven't spent four of it. <laughs> <laughs> And I played a card that got me four gold. It's true. It's true. So did I. <laughs> it was mostly, you know, talking a lot. <laughs> um, and then, so That's that paid the last for time I trade with you, John. cargo boxes. I'll trade with you next time. Holding you to that. <laughs> I'll, mm-hmm. I'll trade with you next time. <laughs> it's a binding agreement. You said it. Uh, <laughs> and then lastly, I do still need some wood. So I think I'll spend one more gold to reset from here and go back there on the wood. So just like that, I get two more of these, and I've got a lot of trade tokens. Yay! All right, well, that trade tokens are the one thing I am not rich in, but we will get there. Well, I'm not really rich in anything at the moment, but, you know, other than talking a big talk over here. Champagne, I guess. (laughs) Champagne, (laughs) yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play this. This is going to cost me my other cheap coal. And a little bit of soap. And I'm going to turn three of these blue workers into three red workers. Very nice. And that's that. I'm going to buy this cotton cloth with a trade token and some wood. Boo, he didn't want to trade for mine? Uh, two a pop? No, thank you, sir. Yeah, in the back of my head, I was like, maybe he will. Maybe he just needs one, but yeah. I, if I needed one, that'd be great. Yeah. I happen to have five cards in my hand. I want them. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I am entirely serious. That is insane. <laughs> I have three, and now I'm lamenting that I did not beat either of you to that. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, here we are. Well, you can buy them from me. Since you weren't trading with John, I made it a much easier for you. <laughs> You know, a very calm game of getting mad at each other with trading. The yes. most peaceful trading game where everybody kind of wins. Of passive aggressively <laughs> threatening each other while <laughs> knowing you're definitely going to be giving them gold later on. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. I think I, <laughs> speaking of giving people gold, let's give some people gold. Actually, is this just all Anastasia? Schnapps and soap? Oh, Nick does have soap. That is true. I do. That is true. And he also has schnapps. So you can do two to That's Nick true. or you I'm, can I'm do g- one each. Oh, wow. You, yeah, I'll go one and one. That, you made it easy for me there. All right, so that's going to take two trade. And then I think I'm going to upgrade all three of these farmers into workers. All right. Well, I guess I am now the last one to do the Nick plan or the John plan or the whoever plan. <laughs> the trade plan. Or just buying trade ships, which is just a part of the game. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm going to put out two craftsmen. And one farmer, and then I'll pay money to send that farmer home, give him a good night's rest, and send him back. And, oh, crappers. Three gold bars. Ooh, I don't want to, John. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I do get that. Uh, this is very annoying, but I guess for the sake of things, I will just spend three... To get this craftsman and reuse it, which is rather frustrating because I miscalculated that. But you know what? That is the luxury of having money. So it's true. And honestly, this is kind of a weird social dynamic with the game where oftentimes people say, I don't want to trade with that person. They have too much money. And usually the person with the least amount of money doesn't mean they haven't made it. They've just been spending a lot. So it's kind of nice to not yeah. be sitting on stacks of cash <laughs> because it incentivizes yeah. people to be like, oh, poor Anastasia. She's so poor. <laughs> She's so poor now. She lost everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. That was that. All you, Nick. You should get your trade tokens too, yeah? Ooh, thank you. Yes, I will. Um, great. I'm going to use this soap and this cotton cloth these things that I just copied from other empires. Um, and this old man <laughs> hey. uh, is going to use it to clean up, I guess. Hey, and nice. uh, he will grab me a purple token. Another purple. Don't like and that. Card. Okay, so it's my turn. And <laughs> for the first time in a while, I've really just kind of looked at the cards that I have in my hand. And something is is jumping out and punching me in the face, I now realize, as far as the direction I should be going. So I'm just going to need to keep that in mind. Uh, Anyway, I should do something right now. I have one trade token left and a pile of the blue workers, surprisingly. I guess I just upgraded three green into blue, so it's not that surprising. Someone can feel free to make some cannons sometime soon. (laughs) We all used our purples making shipyards. It is crazy how expensive my hand is. I just have to say, I don't think at this point in the game I've ever had this many of the eight-point cards, and then obviously I have the five-pointers as well, but wow. Well, I hate to do it with a trade token left unused and four of these workers, but it's time for a city festival. So that is me done. All right. I will use one of my trade tokens... And a craftsman on expensive coal to make coffee. Ah. I'm actually going to overbuild this, what do you call this? String? Twine. Thread? It's string. Twine. Yeah, thread. Because there's nothing else that I'd like to use it for. Nice. So that costs you the coal and the coffee. Very cool. Also, that's six points at the end of the game. Because yeah. of Carl Leonard von Melching. So you're definitely doing a good job of hunting down those points. John, I am buying some boxes from you. Oh, that is very generous. <laughs> yes, it is super generous. Um, <laughs> and what's even more generous is I'm going to build these cannons. Oh. oh, that is incredibly generous. Interesting. Okay. That is interesting. Now, if you haven't played this game before, the reason that's interesting is because in order to get the level to, well, actually, any of the exploration ships, they require cannons. So up to this point, the only ships we could make were trade, which is part of the reason why those are the only ships we're making. But now that Nick has done that, we could trade with him for his cannons. I'll be honest, Nick, I was planning on making cannons myself this turn. So that is giving me an interesting situation because you can only trade for one of a specific good in each round. So if I went to make ships, 
I could only get one cannon, but I could take, I could use that cannon right here and make a level two trade ship uh, or exploration ship right now and not spend all that time making my own cannon. That is tempting, especially considering that level two trade ship needs a purple and cannons require a purple and I only have one. I'm not flush with purples like Nick over there with his massive two. Yeah, Nick, I think I'm going to do it. Uh, so the cannons are red, which means that's going to take two of my trade tokens, and Nick's going to get a coin. Then I'm going to make this level two expedition ship. That will take a sail. It's going to take some wood. It's going to take my purple engineer. And then, of course, the cannons that I just took from Nick. And then that will get me two more exploration tokens. And I could build a level one trade ship if I want to. I can't make a level one exploration ship because they also need cannons. And I've already traded for cannons. Level one trade ships take sails and wood. And I don't see a reason not to do that. Sails go here. Wood goes there. And then I will get yet another trade token. And I have a full fleet at this point. Um, you can cover up previous ships, but this is starting to incentivize me to get another old world tile to get even more ships. But either way, that is me done. Oh, that was really interesting. And I am torn, if I'm being honest, as to how I want to approach here. Really blew your minds with this cannon thing. We've ground to a halt. <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> like really I said, I was handle. going to make my own cannons. I'm actually, in retrospect, I think I'm happy you did it because I only have that one purple. Okay. Uh, I will lose my last two trade tokens. One to each of you for schnapps and beer. Nice. And I will play this guy, <laughs> which is just going to add more cards to my hand. That's totally not what I wanted him to give me. Oh, boy. Alas. You going to make some exploration ships, Nick? Uh, yes, violence ships. Um, two sails. Um, I need two... Sorry, two cannons. Three dollars... To use a red person for a sale. Anastasia, I'm going to buy a sale from you. And one dollar to reuse wood. So I had two wood. And that will get me a level two and a level one. Very nice. That's that. All right. I get to go, and I think I'm going to play this card. That needs two exploration tokens, and I have three of them. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the last one. It's likely I will do nothing with it, but in the future I can use this to get three trade if I need it, even though I have six trade basically, so I have a lot of trade options now. All right. Well, I hate stock vesting with so few, with so many <laughs> workers left, but I've already made, regretted my last turn trying to extend them out, so I'm going to do it. All right, newer worlds. Come on, game. Huh? God damn it. <laughs> oh. Wow, got an overlap on the rubber. And oh, looks that like, hurt. Looks like you wanted sugar cane. I, oh, that I hurt, feel. Nick. <laughs> the hard part about this, this is actually one of my least favorite parts, is that you can't trade for these with other people. Yeah. And every time you take one, you have to take three new world cards, which a lot of them do actually have the five uh, pointers double... can be pretty great like like for the victory point and their effects like they can be actually relatively yeah, cheap on average they do. They, a lot of them give you extra turns or discard cards yeah but still yeah that is a that's painful yeah. but you know what after you looking want... at the eights that i had in my hand i was like i'm not ending this game anyway so <laughs> 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 i'm done it's funny because i've thought the same thing uh so it's up to you john <laughs> and he said nothing it's gonna be a long one guys get ready maybe maybe john's got plans john's got plans i have i have a very specific plan love my hand i i i, I haven't really oh i haven't oh. really taken a high level look at my hand Turn of Fortunes, yes. now he loves it. I didn't dislike it before. It was more I noticed something, and now I'm noticing other things. And I feel like I like everything that I'm noticing. You know, I think I'm actually regretting not buying the other cannon now, but 
I could just buy it now. It's it not would, too late. It would cost a pile of money, though. My uh, Purple Engineer game has not been good so far. You know, I think I am going to play this card right over here. That's going to cost a red and then some bricks. And it's going to get me three more blues. Uh, sorry, two more blues and then two more cards, which might be great or might make me really unhappy. And, huh, I think I'm okay with that. All right. I'm getting in on this sh this uh, ship game. So I'm going to build one more trade ship and another level to explore. So that's going to cost me two sails, two wood, and it's going to exhaust this purple worker, which I already did. And then, Nick, I will give you, well, you only get one gold, but I will use two trade tokens to uh, trade for your cannons. All right. I will use these two exploration tokens to, actually, no. We're going to play this uh, eye patch fellow ah. to hang out with his other eye patch friend. You have more trade than you need, it seems. What? No. That's not how this is going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am going to play this card that I definitely just drew. That is going to take a bread and a beer. Almost a perfect card, really, if I wanted more purples. And I did do think I needed another purple. That's going to give me another one of those hard-to-make cards. But either way. So I'll get a purple and one of these cards. And... Okay. All right. That's me done. Well, you know, Nick pointed out to me after we played Golem that I had this moment where I could take the safe play or risk it and take the chance play. And maybe if I'd taken the chance play, it would have helped me out more. And I'm in that quandary again here. And I think, I think I'm going to take the chance play. So <laughs> let's do it. It worked Don't out so well for Nick. Nick. It didn't work out well for Nick, so I'm hoping the odds are in my favor. <laughs> um, all right, let's do it. All right, we're going to the new world, and we're really hoping, yes, that ah, will work. Needed the chocolate. I needed the chocolate for reasons that I will not speak to. All right, uh, I just want to point out that Anastasia complained about Stadtfesting with five unavailable workers. <laughs> Ten workers, Stadtfest. Wow. Yeah, all right. Wow. Wow. So this is what happens when you can't promote anybody. You just have a bunch of people <laughs> drinking schnapps and whatever else slurry. I'm really while, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I drew all those cards. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to laugh at the end of the game at how many of them I actually played. An interesting part about this play is so far no one has been really going to start the gauntlet towards getting teal cubes. Because uh, in order to do that, we need fur coats uh, to be able to upgrade into teal or just to make teal. And in order for fur coats, we need sewing machines. And in order for sewing machines, we need brass. So in my opinion, the moment somebody buys brass, it's kind of like the initiation of like phase two of the game. <laughs> yeah and no that's true no i was noticing really that too i was like yet. no one's gone at all we don't really we're not really incentivized to either so it's really interesting that this is not happening i mean some people swear that fur coats is what then like kind of kicks off phase three of the game and so it's just that's yeah it's kind of fascinating in my experience once brass happens usually sewing machines and fur coats happen very quickly thereafter is this just a prelude for you to tell us that you're building brass? No. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm no. Not. <laughs> no, it's not doing it. I Sorry. don't have any interest in brass. My society functions fantastically without these higher level goods. You don't need them. The situation I'm in right now is that I'm really tempted to make another ship with this engineer that I have, another one of the exploration ships, and cover up one of my other spots. I'd also love to get another old world tile to just have more ships, but that takes two exploration tokens. So it's a little awkward. I feel like I could cover up an explorer with an explorer, with a double explorer, so that I get up to, I lose one, but I gain two. 
So I could then use that to make an old world and make another one later on, which would get me up to six, which is not terrible. You know what? I think that is what I'm going to do. So, Nick, it is your lucky day. I am going to be making another another level two expedition ship. So that's going to be two trade for your cannons. I don't really think that he thinks of it as his lucky day. I think he's like, I had to buy build the stupid cannons and they're all using them. I wasn't saying anything about it, but you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you made cannons and then everybody got really excited and you're like, they got they got too excited. <laughs> yeah. It's not uh, like you make any more money for going all that work. Yeah. All right, so now, like, the question is, I could also cover up a trade. Uh, I'd go down one trade, and I'd go up two explorers, so I'd have three explorer at my disposal right now. But trade tokens can be so crucial in the right moment. Yeah, I think I'm going to cover up an explorer. So this explorer is going from one to two, so I lost one and gained two. So I effectively gained one overall. And I could build... Huh, another level one ship, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Uh, that I do have to pay a bunch of other stuff, though. I'm a cheater. <laughs> That's going to take <laughs> sails, planks, and a purple, which I do have. So, oh, But you're in the same boat I am. Yeah, was. I am. So I think what I'm probably going to do is Anastasia. I'm going to use your sails. That's red, so it's going to take two trade tokens. And then, actually, I'm not going to use these. I'm going to use this one-shot card. Uh, when I do that, I get three of these. And then I will use two of them right now to you, Anastasia. And then I will leave this one right here and spend one money to reuse this green to get the plank that I need for that. Kind of a weird turn, but I think it gets me where I need to go. We'll see. Okay, so on my turn, I'm going to build some sweet, sweet chocolates. Nice. Continuing to chase that. those mission cards, which is very smart. What's that, 18 points you have now in the bank from those? That is, that is, which is not actually my intention at all. I just really needed the stuff, but, hey. you know, if it works. Yeah. Um. So I'm running out of space, so I'm going to actually build this over these pigs, even though they've been so helpful for me. This is the last thing I need pigs for. So uh, that means that this farmer just kind of comes over here and chills. And this will go on top of there. And that's that. Okay. Um, I am going to buy the other chocolate for a trade token and a green. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. All right. It's my turn again. And Nick just reminded me that I did need to pay an engineer for this ship that I just made. So thank you for catching that. And now the reason I did that was to have two exploration tokens so that I could go to the old world. So let's do it. Uh, I definitely am regretting playing this before. That ordering was, was, was probably wrong. I should have spent those two to go to the old world and then place the new ship over there. But you know what? Sometimes you make mistakes even if you play the game a bunch. Ooh, nice. So this comes in with an industry. It's cheap steel. So normally it's red, but now I can do it for blue and everyone can trade me for cheap steel if they want to. So there you go. We probably should point out that I think it's just us that calls the industries cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that that's actually part of the game. Efficient steel. That's true. Efficient steel. Yeah, again, yeah, we call it probably... cheap because it's one trade token. So everyone else can trade for, can get steel from me for one trade token instead of the normal two, um, which is, you know, cheaper in a way. It is, or it is. we could just call it bargain bin steel. Yes. <laughs> hey, you know what? As long as I get a gold, you can call it whatever you want. Um, yeah, that's the interesting part of this game is the, 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 gold, the trade tokens don't increase the amount of gold you get. So effectively for John, it doesn't matter. It just means it's more opportunities for people to trade with him so they can use their lower level people or, or so they can use their trade tokens more yep. easily. Uh, all right, so I have been waiting all game to get this wonderful... Wow, a level eight card, or an eight-pointer card. That's the first one, I think. Lady played. It may well be. Uh, I'm going to play a sausage, a champagne, 
and a chocolate. That is a really nice card. You really did draw just all the upgrade cards, didn't you? I really, really did. If you only knew how many I still have <laughs> <in my> hand. <laughs> Are you going to make two purples? Um, I'm going to not just make two. I'm going to make three purples, y'all. So Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to uh, remind me if I if I am using okay let's pull out my purples all right so I will replace this one why why, why doesn't he want to come this one with this purple and this one with this purple and then one of these guys very and nice and of course eight points at the end of the game you that's right I'm not saying you're winning. But I am saying that you're doing a really good job of getting points so far. It's nice. I let's like, not I like say that because y'all said that during Golem and then I lost. <laughs> so let's just uh, let's stay the underdog for a little while. <laughs> you can stay the underdog. I'm just saying I like I like what you've been doing. <laughs> Can't stay the underdog when you're winning though. So, all right, I'm going to play this person and buy one of your beers, John. All right. Nice. So you can use that person once in the future to get one new world good of your choice. That's me. I imagine you'll be using it for tobacco, considering... Oh, no, sugarcane. That's right. I think it's that one. I guess one of those two. I'm trying to read your mind here. <laughs> All right. It's my turn. And a couple of turns ago, I talked about maybe making brass. And I You're said, no, I'm not making brass. <laughs> and now I'm making brass. It's happening. Just going to cover this thing up here. Brass is pretty simple. It's just boxes and coal. And I can handle that. Boxes and coal. All right. Brass is in the game. And again, that's slightly ominous because tons of things actually need brass. If we focus in, you can see these glasses need brass. The stopwatch needs brass. The sewing machine and the coat needs brass. Uh, it needs a sewing machine, which needs brass. And we need coats for teal. Also, the steam engine needs brass, and this steam car needs a steam engine. There's just a whole bunch of things that kind of get launched off when brass happens, so we'll see if that actually happens. Either way, that is my turn. So one of you has bread, and one of you has work shirts. I have both of those. I do have bread. All right. Well, I feel like helping Nick today. So Nick, I will use your bread, mm. my canned meat. To do another upgrade action, and I'm going to take these three blues and turn them into four, four, turn them into three reds. Very nice. Uh, and that will be my turn. Um, thanks, Anastasia. I'm going to pay you right back for some class. And I'll spend a purple. And oh, why, thank you. Box, and I'll build some champagne. Ah, six more points to you. It's only two of these, so I'm locked out of those points. Um, actually, I'm going to use this champagne, I think, to build over my cannons. Oh. oh, that hurt. Oh, my God, Nick. <laughs> that is well. a strategy in this game, which is actually super interesting. Yes. Uh, so now, cause... obviously, none of us can make cannons until somebody else makes cannons and uh wow uh, now mean I'm none of us really... can make ships until any of us can make cannons yeah so now none of us can make ca uh, ships or explosion ships until somebody makes cannons again and now i'm really regretting not just going ahead and making my <laughs> own cannons but hey that was a good play that was a good play well at least you snuck in another ship i needed to stod fest and i get did another old world i, I needed th room i think i am pretty happy that that i was able to sneak that in all right, I'm going to play a New World card. Uh, that needs a red in order for me to make some cotton. And I don't have any reds right now, so I'm going to spend three money. And then I'll take a red from somewhere else and then go over here for the cotton. Then I need soap and a trade token. Who makes soap? I do. Both of us. Okay, Anastasia, I think you're going to get it this time. So All right. trading for your soap. And then this also just needs a trade token to be used. And then this has an exclamation point on the effect, which means it's the only card that must be used immediately after you play it. And it says, I have to take two cards from my hand and get rid of them. Shove them underneath the uh, their draw decks. 
And I think the two cards I'm getting rid of are this one and this one, which means, yes, I'm actually getting rid of a three-point card instead of one of the numerous eight-point cards in my hand. Read into that how you will. <laughs> and obviously by doing that, I have effectively lowered my hand size by three because I played a card and then got rid of two more. And then also, that's five points, so I'm feeling pretty good about that turn. All right. Uh, I just realized that when I played my last card, which required bread, I forgot to use a trade token, even though I traded Nick for it. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Nice. And now I'm going to play this card. With, ah, more chocolates. Uh, yes. Another chocolate and some tea. And pretty Nick sure that's coffee. <laughs> coffee. You know what? I'm pretty sure I'm that's uh, spiked coffee. <laughs> I'm making it tea, and Nick, you will get uh, gold for the uh, schnapps. And I will get two of these expedition deck cards. All right. I'm going to spend uh, four military to uh, play another eye patch person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's my turn, and I'm going to festival, shot fest, and unfortunately... I did not use all three of these, so I maybe timed that a little bit wrong. So this is going to go away without me using it, and then I get everything back. All right, I'm done. All right, I am going to use my last trade token and one money to reuse this wood, and I will buy myself some rum. Nice. And what do I want to place this over? That's six more points from that mission card. I guess I will just place it here for now. For now. That's where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a for now. All right. Um, Anastasia, I'm going to pay you a dollar to buy some canned goods. Um, and I will also need to use another trade token and a red worker for some cloth. Go ahead, John. Cool. And that's just a banked main action you can do later on in the game. Very nice. It's my turn, and technically this card has been used up, so I do have to remember to put it in there, cash it in, and now I've got a whole bunch of things I can do. I think the first of those is going to be spending four of my exploration tokens to play this person who does not have an eye patch. <laughs> Apparently only Nick draws the eye patch people. Um, I'm going to use that immediately, so I'll get two gold. Actually, I won't use it immediately. I don't have this gold just yet. Again, I don't want to lose out on the uh, trade tokens, and I have so many trade tokens I can't be sure. But either way, this is in play and I can use it to get the gold and the four temporary trade tokens when I want. Alright? Let's see here. Alright, I am going to actually make my own schnapps. Oh, sort of quite. a late game early. I know, <laughs> I know. Huh. I know. Ask Didn't yourself that, that, that same question. Alright. Uh, so that's going to cost me a potato. Let's do this in the proper order here. All right. So I have to pay one to move this guy over here. And then I'm going to use some of my cheap coal. And then he is going to go home. And this is going to go over my potatoes. I am out of reasons for potatoes. All you, Nick. Mm -hmm. Yep. All me. Okay. I'll pay you each one. One for brass, one for glass. And use the purple to build the pocket watches. All righty. That's exactly what I was going to do on my turn, which means I don't need to do it anymore. That makes me happy. <laughs> I'm going to play this person. Um, they need work shirts. They also need a trade token. And they need the uh, pocket watches. So the pocket watch is a red mm -hmm. okay cool so that's going to be two more trade tokens so nick gets a gold i actually forgot to take a gold from when nick traded back with me and then this person will give me an extra action when i use them and i think i will not for the moment anastasia just pointed out to me that i have been cheating i guess i have too many trade tokens one two three four five six and i have seven of these tokens i'm not sure how that happened uh so i'll get rid of this one and i did have one extra trade token the last time i did a festival so Hopefully I didn't actually cheat. Thanks for catching that. All right. Well, it's really interesting because I actually am in a position where I have enough workers that I could build my own cannons. I don't have anywhere to put them. 
<laughs> so I mean, I don't think you need the barley anymore. I'm you know pretty what? sure you're done with that. You don't know. I just built schnapps. You what did. If I want beer or bread. You're a wild card. <laughs> um, well, I guess we're out of bread, but who knows? Who knows? I think at this moment, I have so many workers that they'll come back to me if I need them. So I'm going to go ahead and shot vest. Awesome. That will be that. I am going to uh, get some rocks and some whiskey and pour some whiskey on the rocks for this fine gentleman here and just even more trade tokens. You drew off. every one of those cards, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> I, yeah. Instead of drawing cards that let me like deal with my own workers. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's legal because he doesn't have an eye patch. Just... Right, yeah, he doesn't quite fit the team. <laughs> but they they make him go hang out with uh, <laughs> the other side, the yeah. Other people, yeah. All right, it's my turn, and I think I'm gonna make glasses. Those cost glass, and Anastasia has that, so that is gonna be one trade token and one gold to Anastasia. They need brass, and I make brass, and they need an engineer, and I have a couple of those, so that is done. All right. I am going to use my schnapps, and one of you has work shirts. That's me. One of your work shirts. And awesome. John's work shirts, and I'm going to play this fine fellow and keep him around. All right. I'll take a gold for the trade, and now Nick can go. Shot fast. Hey, simple turn. Nice. Great. It is time for me to go, and I think I'm going to use this card now. So that's going to get me two gold, and then it's going to get me four temporary trade tokens. Then I'm going to use two of these. And Nick, I'm going to once again use your pocket watch. So that's a gold to you. Then I need to use my eyeglasses. And then who has canned meat? Is that Anastasia? That's me. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I will get rid of another trade token to do that. And this is going to get me two expedition cards. And I actually have two up here already, so I can just add those to the pile. And technically, I should be considering these uh, when I'm making my cube grabbing decisions. But so far, I've been kind of ignoring them. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to use this fine fellow. Um, I'm not even going to bother taking all taking his trade tokens because I'm actually going to use all of them to play this other fine fellow. So I'm going to put this guy away. So I used the three trade tokens that he gave me, two of them to go to Nick. For the one cloth. Of them, yeah, two of them to go to Nick for the cloth because John just reminded me of a rule and I'm slightly annoyed at him at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, valid, I guess. <laughs> it's not his fault at all, but you know what? Nick has more cards, and I'm feeling sorry for him, which is something that he'll remind me of later, which I should not have done because <laughs> he's probably definitely winning. All right. I, I think it'll probably be appropriate in this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then the last one for this, and then I will use my own schnapps. And I'm going to go ahead and take this extra turn right now. And I will use two exploration tokens to go to the old world. And Let's see. Hey, cheap, cheap cargo. Boxes. Well, you know, I would have rather the empty relevant. space, but we'll see. You can yeah. still you cover can this up. Build over it. Oh, that's right. All right. I am doing cloth, soap, trade token. And playing this lady with the cool hat to I draw know. two expeditions. Great. All right, it's my turn, and I think I am going to build cannons, a thing I should have done a while ago. All right, John, taking one for the team over there. <laughs> That's going to help me out, too. Um, I could get away without it. There's a path through where I could not do it, but I'm going to go for it. Uh, so that is going to take a engineer. It's going to take steel and i have cheap steel now so i may as well use it and then oh anastasia has cheap cargo boxes i sure do you know what i'm gonna lose this one if i don't use it i can also just go here with that 
Uh, sure, I'll use this. Uh, so go ahead. I'll trade with you for the cargo boxes for that one. And cannons are back in the game. All right. Well, I am not going to turn down that opportunity. But before I do, let's take a brief break to uh, spend another round. Spending three trade tokens and one sausage. Who are you trading for the card. clock this time? This time I will be generous and send it right on back to you, John. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, okay. So those three come over here, and I will, again, use my extra turn right now, and let's build some ships. Hey. Okay. I can't build both. Sorry. Let's not get too excited here. I can build one. And one exploration one. ship. Yeah. Yeah. So first things first, let's do our two sails. We're going to do our two wood. We will pay John our last two trade tokens. For the cannon. For the cannon. And we will exhaust one of our many engineers who have nothing better to do. And that will be that. I will take awesome. my tokens. I'll take the gold. And now it's your turn, Nick. I will use <laughs> one of your massive trade tokens. Nope. No, no, no. This, this lady. Trade tokens, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, for cigars. Awesome. That's six more points because of the objective. And obviously, I think it's relatively obvious you need that for a card in your hand. Cover up some twine, I guess. Actually, some poultry. Great. I forgot to put this card away since I already fully used it. All right, it's my turn, and I think I'm going to do a festival, and then I'm going to use this card right here to take another main action. And with that, I'm going to buy a single level 2 exploration ship with this shipyard. I could buy a level 1 ship, but the problem is all of the level 1 trades are gone, and I don't think I need a 7th exploration. I think 6 is going to be, is going to be fine, so I'm just going to make the 1 ship. That means I need a sail. I need some wood planks. I also need the cannon that I just made. And then one of these two engineers. And that will get me two more explorer tokens. All right. Pretty simple turn over here. I'm going to yeah. spend these two exploration tokens and play this nice lady. And I'm going to leave her chilling over here. I'm playing this upgradey person. With cigar, champagne, and bread, just throwing a straight up party. Yeah. Don't know what I want my upgrade to look like yet, so I'm not going to do it yet. All right. And here I thought I had purple workers locked in, but I don't think that's going to happen. All right. It's my turn, and I'm going to spend six exploration tokens to play this fine eight point fellow who gives me another action. And I think I'm going to use this immediately to take another action. And with it, I am going to buy a sewing machine. Oh, oh, someone's going for fur coats. Getting classy over there, John. Yeah, so that's going to take, I'm going to do some cheap steel. We got some brass and then my other engineer. All right. In a very unsurprising turn of events, going to use this lady for her three trade tokens to play this <laughs> yet another card that needs cloth that you can't make another that you have to trade for. card that needs cloth that's right and so i'm going to uh put her over here and i am going to take two from the expedition deck and i will put one down here on canned meat all right that is that who uh, did you buy your cloth from? Today, I help you, Nick. Oh, so nice. Back and forth. Yep. Back and forth. Don't worry, there's many more to go. <laughs> Maybe not that many. But. I'm going to use two exploration tokens to put another pirate into play, believe it or not. <laughs> this is unreal. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no words. I'm done. All right, it is my turn. And it's time for, for Coats to enter the scene. These take a sewing machine, 
which I have. They also need cloth, which I make. And they need boxes, which I can make. But my boxes are red. And Anastasia, you have blue boxes, right? I sure do. Yeah, I'm going to trade for one of those. So you can take a gold. And now fur coats exist. And it is worth noting that you can upgrade a purple into a teal with a red uh, cube and a fur coat. And teals can be pretty important depending on the situation because they're required to make all of these end game super fancy industries. So, yeah. All right. That is me done. All right. I'm going to make a little left turn move here and I'm going to build windows. Okay. Which no one has done. I'm going to spend... Somewhat surprisingly, considering you made glass so early, I kind of expected w Windows to happen soon after that, but every yeah. time we play this game, the pattern is different. So I used my own glass, and I had to spend one to reuse a worker on my wood. And that's that. Wow, suddenly my turn looks so different than it did a hot second ago. <laughs> huh. um, I'm going to upgrade... Oh, no. going to do this and this and this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I need a red, which is this guy. I need coats, which is $1 to John. Yep. I need windows, which is $1 to Anastasia. I need cheap steel, which is $1 to John. Yep. Cheap coal, which is $1 to Anastasia, and <laughs> cheap boxes which is a dog <laughs> anastasia that's three tokens which is one of these salty dogs cool so i get two more gold out of all of that and you turned what essentially a so blue into a teal basically yeah <laughs> wow but stuff is actually active so i'm gonna do it one by one so blue into a red red into a purple purple into a teal that makes sense um, I was not sure that I was going to be doing any upgrading, but I, I've, and I gave both of you like a victory point to do that, but <laughs> almost, I guess you gave, did Anastasia get three cold? Yeah. I yeah. got, I gave her three, and I got and two got out two. of all that. Yeah. 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 I don't, I, I was very much struggling with workers, so that seemed good. Yeah. And that's part of the, my reticence to maybe do the sewing machine for a coat because it, allowed things like this to happen but it also gives me a path to play all the cards in my hand one of the paths anyway sure that's my turn well i think for my turn even though i have a bunch of cubes over here and I have a bunch of trade tokens down over here the right thing for me to do is to festival so that is what i'm going to do all right anastasia you're up all right i'm going to go ahead and do an upgrade action as well so i'm going to take all of these fine craftsmen I'm going to put them right here because this is going to get a little confusing. So I'm going to upgrade three of them into purples. So the first way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to put two of them on windows, two of them on my own steel. I'm going to use one trade token to use John's cheap steel so you get a money, John. And then I will put one of these guys back and put him back for three money. Got it. And then three of these guys, I guess this one, this one, and sure, this one will all become <laughs> purples. You have an army so, of purple cubes. All I did in this game is upgrade everyone. And then all right, I get that's my turn. One gold. You get from one money. Trade. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, I. I'm going to crack one of these for some trade tokens. And then I will use one of them as a rubber uh, investor steel for this. Yeah. Cool. We're good. Awesome. It's my turn. And I'm going to spend six explore again and then play another one of these fellows who give me an extra action. And I will use it immediately to take another main action. John's making me nervous over there. <laughs> I'm sure you could see why I took the cannons to be able to get to the six tokens and why, yeah, I was a bit bummed when Nick went made that go away when I was just two explore away from, from getting to the, the six uh, explore requirements there. 
Now for the action I just got from that card, I'm going to do an upgrade. I'm going to turn a purple into a teal, so that's going to cost a red and a fur coat. And then I could do two more upgrades if I want. I'm just trying to figure out if I get two teal or not, or if I just spend five money to reuse the teal. I guess five money is almost two points, so I'll just make another one. Then again, I would then have no engineers, so I'd have to upgrade into the this red to get back over here to get that engineer. I think that's fine. Um, I say that. It's possible that this is a mistake, but I am going to do it anyway, so that'll go there. This red. Mm, I guess this will take two more reds. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, instead, I think I will maybe make another purple. That is going to take a window as well as a steel. And I have cheap steel. So I think that makes us worth it. And then for the window, Anastasia, I will trade you for that. You get a coin. And I can do one more upgrade if I want to. And I think I will. I'll turn a worker into a, a red. So that's going to take coal as well as cargo boxes. And I think I'm going to trade with you again, Anastasia. One, All right. Once for the coal and once for the cheap cargo boxes. I think do what that you gotta do. is going to be better because <laughs> coal and cargo boxes both are red for me. And I'm trying to make reds that I can then use. So that means this worker is actually a red craftsman. This red craftsman is actually an engineer. And this engineer is actually my first investor of the game. All right, Anastasia, All right. Up. I'm going to start vest. All right. Easy. Okay. Um, I'm going to crack another one of these for three more because I need five trade tokens to play this card. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a dollar to Anastasia and two dollars to John. Nice. Ah, you're trading for my fur coat as well as my work shirts. Correct. And now I have, you guessed it, I was gonna more say, trade is tokens. This, this is just becoming <laughs> parody. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anyone get this many temporary trade tokens before. It's comical. I love I love that, that you drew all trade token cards and I drew all upgrade cards. <laughs> just like John just drew red workers. That's great. That's me. All right. It's my turn and I am going to build a steam engine. This needs brass, steel, and an entrepreneur, which is the teal. So I have the teal there. The steel will happen there. And then the brass is going to take one of my reds. All right, that is out. So technically, people could now make the blue cotton cloth because that needed raw cotton as well as a steam engine. Although I suspect maybe people are done with cotton cloth at this point in the game. But either way, I'm done with my turn. Well, I am not done with no? cotton cloth. No, you going to go for it? Uh, no, I'm not going to go for it because at this point, <laughs> you have so the turns many it would tokens. take me. At this point, the turns it would take me to do that, I might as well just trade for it. So, um, I've been uh, running through a fairly prescriptive plan actually for a couple of turns now. I know, I, I know, I can't end it, but I'm just going to sit here and keep trading. Yeah, keep getting <laughs> for points. Cloth. So I could have ended this game a little earlier, but I decided not to because I was worried that I was already behind. You get seven points for ending the game, but. I was worried that I was behind it. I'm now worried that my letting the game go on, maybe I'm not gaining enough on you two, but we'll, we'll just have to see because I'm not really getting that many end game points from the mission cards. And I feel like both of you have done a pretty good job of targeting those. We'll see. The fact that you're going to get, you had so many of these played. We've both played at this point. Let's see. You played just, just out of curiosity, I think 17, 17 cards. cards and I have played 16. Well, this will be 17, but oh, okay. I played far more uh lower level cards so it'll be true. very interesting and nick has 13 Just yeah i'm curious see how this plays out i'm curious to see where, what happens so i paid three trade tokens uh i'm gonna trade with nick because uh, i feel like you're the leader now so which i know is <laughs> terrible because he seems feeble <laughs> <laughs> i just realized i actually forgot to take the two coins that nick gave me trading on his last turn so i'm gonna do that real quick all right well yeah you can have it, Nick. And uh, I am, I I played a soap, so uh, we'll place this here and I will take two more expedition cards. 
Uh, my turn, yeah? Yeah. Festival Stadtfest. Easy turn. All right. <laughs> I have had an interesting set of turns of trying to get all these cards played for points instead of just playing a card and discarding the other two, which I'm pretty sure both Nick and Anastasia have figured out is something I could have done a while ago, but I wanted these points. And I'm at the tail end of it now because I can finally make a steam wagon. I've run out of space on my island, so I think the steam wagon is going to run over these barley fields. Then I need rubber, a steam engine, as well as an investor. Uh, now, I only have one investor, so that means I'm going to have to spend five of this money, which is almost two points because six uh, money is, uh, or every three money is a point. So five of this means it's pretty costly to get that investor back to then use it to flip this. And hopefully this is not a dumb thing to do. I'll spend this trade token for the rubber. And then I do need to activate my steam engine, which is going to take an engineer. And now I have a steam wagon. All right. I am going to actually not do what I expected to do, which is trade you all for another cloth. <laughs> Don't worry, that's coming. Um, I'm actually, oh, nosies, am I going to be a trade token short to make this happen? That is unfortunate. Stymied here at the end. Oh, Nick, the risky play or the smart play? <laughs> Let's do the risky one, which is not really <laughs> drawn, risky at all. I've drawn quite a few of those, which is pretty good considering you have this fleet of engineers and many of those expedition cards give you two points for the yes, purple. But, but we'll see because what I really could, I, I was going to, I need some more upgrades, <laughs> but we'll, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, You're going to have six of those now. Nice. All right. So uh, again, I had to spend, unfortunately, four trade tokens on this one because I had none of these things. Uh, so in this case, I'll still give it all to Nick. Nick, you may have bread <laughs> and cloth. Wow. So nice. Yes. Everything's coming up, Nick. <laughs> okay. I am going to uh, take two main actions this turn. And the first of those main actions is going to be to build uh, coffee, which I need coal. Um, so, Anastasia, I'll give you a dollar to purchase some cheap coal. And uh, I also need to spend a trade token for the actual beans themselves. Um, we will cover over uh this you know what actually we're gonna crush our one uh shipyard just because <laughs> you're done making ships it's just we're done making ships and we'll <laughs> the coffee i don't know gets poured into the ocean or something i don't know um and then and then we're going to spend these three trade tokens to john for um ah. this fine fellow yeah that's uh coffee and uh soap for me this is why you never actually feel like Nick is uh, behind because then he plays cards like that and you realize <laughs> your attempt to take away the purples is going to fail right now <laughs> to Nick. Yeah. And you regret. You have, you have seven, right? I do, Nick. And you I will. I don't have enough reds. Oh. I only have four reds. So at maximum, if I cash both these in, I would be tied with you. Ah. Okay, we'll go back to yeah. feeling sorry for you. Continue. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> you could feel proud of me. You're right. I am could, so proud just a of you. Suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> you two are jockeying over this university, and I, I'm just trying to end this game, and I hope it'll be worth it. I'm, I'm starting to feel like it's not, but we'll just have to find out soon. Uh, you're done, right, Nick? I'm done. Yeah, this has created a very interesting tension because John. It feels like John has been very close to ending it every turn. So I feel like I every turn is my last. And I keep being <laughs> like, now I'm like desperate. I'm like, John, am I going to get two more turns? Can I like, I want to look up the spoilers for the end. Can you just well, tell me? Like, you're am always going to get, get two more turns because I was the starting player and we finished the round oh, right. and then do one more round. Um, oh, phew. I'm fine, guys. Take your time. I'm good. I just need <laughs> two more turns and I'll find well, everything I needed to do. Well, that's th that makes me even less confident that it was a smart idea to drag this game <laughs> on. I probably should have ended it. <laughs> Uh, this is a just little my personal ago. goals here. This does not mean I get points. This is my personal desire to play the cards I'm capable of playing. <laughs> well, I think the right call for me to do right now is a festival. So that is what I am going to do. All right. That is not what I expected. No? Me okay. neither. Okay. 
Well, this is interesting because no matter what John has in that little hand of his, I'm still going to have three turns, including this one, which kind of changes my yeah. plans ever so slightly. Not not that crazy, actually. I'm going to go ahead and just play this. Um, let's get the exploration down. Let's get a little more gold, and uh, I'm going to get some trade tokens, and that will, that will open things up. So I will cash him in right now for four temporary trade tokens. And uh, that'll be that. Okay. Um, I'm going to cash in this lady for six temporary trade tokens. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was four somehow. Um, and I will use one of them to play this person using my bicycles and schnapps. Uh, and that's, that's, that's good. I'm good there. All right. I am going to play this gentleman right here who wants rum, he wants a fur coat, and he wants a steam wagon. So he is a very fancy gentleman. Uh, the fur coat is going to be a red... The steam wagon is going to be one of my engineers. And then the rum is something I could have made, but it would have taken an entire turn. And it would have given me six points, but I feel like I need to actually make this game end ASAP uh, to kind of stem the bleeding of points that you two are making. Uh, so, uh, Anastasia, I need your rum. I think rum was made from uh, cane sap, not ASAP, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, do both of you make rum at this point? Just me. I don't. Okay, cool. So. I would have very so earlier when you were like Nick, I think you wanted the leaves for the tobacco, yeah. or you wanted the sugar cane for the rum. The answer to that question was rum. yes. Oh yeah, yes. And <laughs> I I drew the three, not those two things. <laughs> <laughs> very impressive. All right, so Anastasia, I'm going to trade for your rum, and that's going to take two trade tokens, and you get a coin, and then I'm going to use this person to take another action immediately. And I am going to play this person. So they need a sewing machine, a steam wagon, and some crates. And the reason I went down this path is because I had one person who needed the fur coat and a steam wagon, another person who needed a sewing machine and a steam wagon. And that seemed synergistic enough to try and make this happen. But, man, the steam wagons are tough to get to because you need the steam engine first. And anyway, we'll see what happens. So I do need to pay for this. That's going to be some boxes. It is a sewing machine, which is another red one. And then my steam wagon gets used again with another engineer. That's two of them in this round, in this turn even. And then I will use this immediately to get three one-time use exploration tokens. So I actually have nine of them at my disposal, and that finishes my turn. More than needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be happy to have nine of them. So... I am going to pay a sausage. Nick, you get a money for your bread. Thank you. And now I just have to think very briefly about how I want to divvy these guys up. You know what? I don't actually have to decide in this moment nope. because I can hold on to that. So I'm going to hold on to that. I never considered that, but I can just, I'm going to keep him right there for right now. Sounds good. Hanging out. Yeah, great. All right. Um, I'm going to crack this for three temporary trade tokens. One, two, three. Um, I am going to play this lady uh, for a pocket watch, a cloth, and a trade token. And I'm going to discard these two gramophone cards out of my hand. <laughs> are definitely not getting played then i'm going to take another turn or another main action and i'm going to buy another car from you john yeah as swear, well as a cotton cloth if nick ends I'm the game right now oh my god oh he just <laughs> he just snaked you yep. he just snaked you so hard yep um <laughs> Wow. So that's that. Uh, oh, I did need to uh, 
I did need to use I did need to use the other pocket watch for that fellow. This is gonna be such a good friendly ties episode, y'all. <laughs> you gotta yeah. make sure you come listen to us chat about this. <laughs> Certainly a mistake for me to let this game go on. Yeah. Um, and since the last Stodfest, I just want to point out that I've used uh seven no fifteen trade tokens. Did you trade for me in in all that? Twice. Twice, okay. So you get the uh the the seven point ending the game yeah, token. The fireworks. Yeah, fireworks. And we actually will not get so that comes back to John that, to finish the round. So we all get so one all, more turn. One more turn. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, man. Spicy Nick. <laughs> I know. I that know. was good. Playing the underdog over there. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna play this card that I could have played a long time ago. <laughs> discard two cards from my hand obviously i that's my last card in the hand because i decided to try and play the cards in my hand to get points but obviously that was a a huge mistake so i will get rid of these three then spend three more and that's an eight points and that's gonna be my final action uh yeah i'm gonna keep it real simple you guys with all your fancy actions check this out we're gonna do another upgrade (laughs) Just making a pile of reds. Uh, no one else has sausage, do they? No. All right. Uh, work shirts. You know what, John? We'll throw you a little love over there. So, how many times uh, have you traded with Nick? I, I you, not as many as you think. <laughs> we should we should keep a like uh, counters in between us so that we know <laughs> at the end of the game. I'm also gonna take the two gold that. Uh, Nick gave if, over to me here. If he ends up winning, this will be the last time that I pity trade with Nick ever. <laughs> I feel like you say that every time. <laughs> He's very good at being convincing that he has bad hand. Um, to be fair, that was your interpretation. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, he barely got any money out of me. I usually split it between you two. Okay, so uh, I got to pay. Let's see. I got to put a sausage down. And I guess now would be the time to cash these in since this is my last turn. So um, I'm basically going to turn all five of my blues into reds. So so let's just put five reds. Well, it doesn't really matter at this point. It doesn't. It's your last turn. We can do it right. So um, all right. So two... Got rid of these two, and then one, two, three. Now, the question is, however, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Whatever. I'll turn this green into a blue, and we'll call it a day. That's my six upgrades. All right. Okie doke. Last action. I will use this investor, uh, thanks to this fellow over here, to get five bot, five gold. Um, and then I will... Sp- Spend two exploration tokens to draw three cards from the expedition deck. Very nice. Um, I'm also going to trigger both of these, uh, and I'm probably going to do the like seven purples thing, but I'm just going to look at my expedition Actually, cards. To... Just to retroactively go back to my turn here, I, I legitimately forgot. Yeah, this I was, was just an about option. to say, you so should do I that. Would for... Totally uh, use this investor to also get five gold, which is almost a point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And technically, that should was two be, points because that got me to eighteen. Should be two points, yeah. Yeah, I'm honestly sure I missed a couple gold that I was supposed to get from some of your trades throughout this game. But uh, either way, all right. Well, let's uh, do the final scoring, and we'll just start here with the missions. So the first one is ten points to the player with the most purples, four points to the person who has the second most. How many? Uh, I have, um, I think, two. Yes, I have two. I have seven. How many did you end up with, Nick? I did the seven thing that we talked about. Okay. That we talked about. (laughs) Yeah, like we talked about that. Okay. I've totally forgotten how this scores when it's a tie. It's a friendly tie, I'm pretty sure. It is a friendly tie, I'm pretty sure as well. Yep. So um, when it's a tie for second place, everyone at second place gets it as well. So I get a whopping four points for that, which I honestly was not expecting. Uh, Then we all get six points for each one of the New World goods we've made, which is coffee, chocolate, cigars, and rum. And I did none of those. I did three of them. I did three of them as well. Then 
six points for champagne and artillery, and I think you both did that once, and I did none. And that is it. What's with it? What's with this copycat game, Nick? You had to just you couldn't couldn't play your own game. You had to copy mine. <laughs> it looked good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we'll score the rest of my area. Uh, we'll start with these expeditions. I have four points for these two purples. That's five. That's six, seven, eight for this investor. And then nine. So that's nine for all of those. Then I have 11 of these three-pointers. So that is 33. I have three of these five-pointers. So that is going to be 15. And I have six of these eight-pointers. So that is 48 more points, yeah. And then 18 divided by three is six. And let's see what my final score is. So that is a final score of 115, which is pretty good um, from my past experience. All right, let's see Anastasia next. So I've got what I got from the end game cards and uh, six, 18 divided by three is six uh, from my gold. And for my cards up here, let's see. I had 13 threes. So wow. many three cards. All right, so that's going to be... 39 for those. And I only had two eights. I kept oh, it. Oh, wow. That's a big difference. Yep. Uh, but I did get six. Oh, wow. Six, six fives. That's a lot. Yeah. Fives. That was just me and that cloth. I'm just yep. going to point out how many of those were cloth. Uh, and then down here, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 points from the uh, investors. Or what do you call these, actually? The, the expeditions. Expeditions, Muse, that's museums right. Museums and, and zoos. Yep. All right, so, so 85 for my cards transposed. And then what do I got here? One. That is a 39. monstrous score. That's one of the highest scores I've ever seen. Pretty sure that is the best game of Anno that I've ever played. And now let's see if Nick still beat me. <laughs> All right. The uh, expedition gods smiled on me with a fair amount of purples here. So I got 2, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Um, 27 bucks is 9 points. I got 7 for my fireworks. Um, and then I have 4 eights for 32. I have six fives for 30 and then i have is that 11 threes for 33 yep very similar scores for each of those classes there oh 10, boy. 28 34 47 56 uh 63 95 a buck 25 um, plus 33 is 158. Yep. Oh, my God. You sound surprised. I hate playing games with Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is, I, I think it's it's pretty clear. This is a bit of an experiment for me because I I could have ended the game a long time ago. Um, and like, I probably like would probably, have won. Probably I 10 rounds. Had. <laughs> I probably would have, I probably could have ended it 10 rounds ago. Um, before I even made the uh, sewing machine, um, all I really needed to do was the glasses and stopwatch. At that point, I could have just uh, uh, done a festival a couple times and played that card to get rid of a couple cards in my hand. And honestly, my score would have probably been, what, around 16 less? And uh, I think both of your scores would have been a lot less than 16 less. So uh, I felt like I was behind and I needed to catch up, but it looks like the opposite happened there. To be fair, John, I'm pretty sure even if you had ended it earlier, I would have probably, I would have probably been able to play like four less of these cards, but I still had to, to, to uh, Nick's point, I still had a lot of this stuff already down and I still had a lot of these already. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't think, I think what you were worried about in the moment that I had more points than you in that moment, I think I did. You probably did, Given yeah. where you were and how, because, you know, the bulk of your points came from what was in your hand. 
But yeah. I do think that you doing that completely unlocked Nick's game. I mean, he like the minute you built. Well, yeah, he used coats, my uh, he used my steam engine, your my steam, steam wagon engine. twice. So that yeah, I think that, if I hadn't built the steam wagon, then you would have won, right? I mean, do you agree with that, Nick? I think that's very very realistic yeah yeah and i put a lot of effort into that steam wagon because i had to do the steam engine before that and i had to do well the brass was good i needed the brass for the glasses uh and the stopwatch um earlier on but yeah it does seem like that so earlier on when i was like wow my hand like really feels like it's you know straightforward that's because half of my hand needed exploration i think i had four cards that needed six exploration or maybe it was three that needed six and one that needed four and then one that needed two and that seemed like a really good strategy, like just get a bunch of exploration. But the problem is, you know, I got up to six and I needed to do a festival action between each one of those to keep getting those other cards out. And then I tried to work in this other thing, get teching up to the steam wagons to play the other two cards, which felt like they were really synergistic. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think they were just way, it was just way too slow for me to do all that work for such a tiny bit of payout. Yeah. Yeah, which is the essence of this game, the that tug of war, the race versus the points. It's what makes it I th- agreed. I think that if you said to yourself, I feel behind, I need to catch up, what you needed to really do was go for the new world, actually build some of these things, and then depending on what cards you draw, then make your game plan. Because you had a couple cards that allowed you to discard cards. I had two so of those, you- yeah. And that was a funny situation because normally when I'm playing this game, I feel like I ha- get a bunch of these expensive cards that need a bunch of new worlds that I don't have. But in this game, I only had one of them. I had that massive hand. All of these cards that I drew, only a, uh, I think two of them needed new world stuff. Um, actually, no, only one of them did. Um, and that was uh, the uh, rum, and I already had sugarcane. So that's when I said I kind of had a plan. It's like, I don't really want to draw into more. I discarded one of these because it needed light bulbs, and that seemed like it was going to be very difficult to do. But um, mm. so it like seemed really lucky at the time to draw all those that needed just a bunch of exploration. But it seems like exploration is really slow, or maybe I just needed to build even more, like actually make these uh, three-tier ones so that I could do a festival and have like 12 of these tokens and actually play multiple of them. Maybe that well, was my it's mistake. It's so hard to build the three tier ones because you need to get the teal worker for the artillery, the teal worker for the, the, the steam. three shipyard. Yeah. I mean, it's, it takes so long to do. It really does. Um, yeah. And, and that's viable in a game where someone goes for the upgrade things a little bit earlier. Like we played one of those games where like no one was willing to go for sewing machine. Yeah. Um, I actually do think that there's like a very viable strategy in like going for, the fur coats like pretty early when other people are like i'm doing other things like i can't just like tech into stealing your sewing machine right now or something yeah um so there's an opportunity to do that but this was one of those games you know i think we play these more than not where like we couldn't we couldn't get anywhere with it um but yeah i think that not not scoring any of the end game points there really is just it's 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 rough i think that like yeah it's, it's tough to win without those yeah and I, the thing is that none of them really worked with all the other plans i had um you know that in order to get the cards played it just didn't seem like they were synergizing and i could have done them instead of playing my cards i suppose and you know perhaps i should have uh i definitely definitely feel like i whiffed on this one i mean this is a a strange play i mean it's interesting that we recorded it because these are the biggest scores i've ever seen in this game which which does lead me to think that it was it was a super mistake to let the game go on so long but honestly <laughs> i could have ended this game before anyone got a teal cuz people only got teal because i made a sewing machine that then let a fur coat be made so that teal could be made so if i had never made the sewing machine i wonder if anyone would have and the game could have ended before any of these purples got created at all I'm really excited to talk about this uh, and take it apart. And so, yeah, I hope you guys will come join us as we dissect this a little bit more and talk about, I mean, I think we've all played this game. I know I've played this game at least a dozen times. I'm pretty sure I have as well. We'll look it up before we actually record it. But yeah, we're, we've all played this one a bunch. In fact, you two were the first two to play it with, uh, with me a year ago. And yeah, we'll go into all this stuff uh, soon. I think that's going to bring, our discussion of this one to a close. And yeah, definitely, if you'd like to hear us talk a lot more about Anno 1800, because we love this game and we have a lot of thoughts, you know, positive and negative, but mostly positive, uh, please check out the Friendly Ties uh, podcast discussion. You can find a link to that in the description of this video, and you can also just find it uh, just by searching for Friendly Ties wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for watching this playthrough. 
As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.